All right, I'm gonna sound like a broken record here, but definitely being tested today. What is happening, Cog Squad? Jason over here at Cog Hill Farm. Brooke, AKA Mrs. Cog Hill's already done beat me to, to the chores this morning. It is a, it's been like this several mornings in a row, maybe like three. Well, look, there's a giant fog in the sky. And you can't see nothing. Really weird. But then eventually just clears up and gets hot. <laughs> well, hello, Tuck Tuck. Hello, Tucker. Hey, girl. Hey, oh, we got an announcement to make, don't we? Tucker has her very own shirt in the Cog Hill shop. So if you guys are inter interested in a Tucker or pink shirt, go check it out, right? Yeah. Just came out, didn't it, girl? Yeah. Just came out. Good morning, y'all. How y'all doing this morning? We got big plans today, guys. Big plans today. Yeah, we do. So it looks like Rhonda got out. What's crazy is, is these animals, or just I say animals, these birds, the poultry, the chickens are not as bad. The turkeys are the worst. Um, they're obviously not the brightest tool in the shield. A turkey can get out this fence by flying, hey Felix, by flying over it. Y'all see Miss Ozella and her babies right here. Tommy's molting, as you can see. Look at him losing his feathers. Anyways, the, um, turkeys can get out of the fence, but for some reason, they can't get back in the fence. I don't I don't get it. I don't understand why they just can't pop back over there. Anyways. How's everybody doing this morning? Hmm? Hello, Mr. Corny. Pearl. I see there's Crazy Loki, Sylvie One. There is, uh, that's Phyllis Diller this morning. Diane. Uh, Pumpkin. Cheryl. No, it's not Cheryl, it's April. Cheryl's been broody, y'all. Cheryl's been super broody. But there's Ozella in the family. Scott, Ozella, the four kids. Look at the four kids run off that chicken. Goodness gracious. Man, they, they, they ain't too much, too much, I mean, too much longer. They're gonna be as big as Ozella. Oh, Look how much they've grown. Hey, squash, squash this morning. Hey guys, we got a big day today. We do. Big day on the farm. We are going to start the fall garden. Y'all believe that? Yep. We are gonna plant our own food this year because we didn't do it last year because all the moving, and y'all know how much we love gardening, and you know how much I love fall gardening, and just think of all the goodies we're gonna have, because you know you guys are gonna get some of it. We're gonna share the wealth with our babies. All right, let me go check on Moo Man, and the boys, and Nugget, and the alarm system. Well, there's cantaloupe this morning right there. And there's Greg way back yonder this morning. There's several chickens over there at the feeder. Matter of fact, Lydia's at the uh, big chicken feeder this morning. And look, what I'm talking about turkeys, look. Look, there's Ruby in the goat pen and she cannot figure out how in the world to get back over here. She flew into the goat pen, but she can't fly out of the goat pen. Goodness gracious, it's kind of like a roach motel. They check in and they never leave. Ain't that right, Scott? Scott's molting as well. You can see how tiny his tail is now. Yep, all his big feathers are gone. Mike Tommy, he's molting. All right, let me go, let me go finish up. Let me go finish up, guys. I just absolutely love gardening, as most of y'all know, but especially the fall garden, and for several reasons. Uh, the fall garden, well, here in, here in Alabama, we're in zone eight, and I can actually grow more things 
during the fall and winter months varieties than I can in the summer months. Ain't that crazy? You don't think about that, but we really can. And the fall gardening, what makes it awesome is it's cooler weather, right? So you're not out there sweating to death, less insect pressure. That's um, one. And collard greens. I mean, so yeah, it's this uh, uh, awesome, awesome time to garden. How's the sheriff? He's good. So is the alarm system, guys. Y'all being quiet. Thank you very much. Thank y'all. Thank you. I know it. They were a little, they were a little loud, but not like normal. Oh, that's because I've already... You've already fed them. You fed them, man. Hey, big baby. What's going on, Moo Man? So I got to tell you guys something about Moody and the boys and Mildred and the girls. Man, you know, I ain't never thought about that. Moody and the boys, Mildred and the girls. Even though Tilt is technically not a girl, he's a weather, but... I have gonna, I'm gonna try something new with these guys. I, I say new, semi new, and I tell you, hang on. Hey, buddy. So, you know that we had a, a viewer of the channel send us the Redmond salt block. And I really haven't seen any difference in flies, to be honest with you. The salt block really isn't being utilized. I don't know if they don't like the flavor of it or what. Just as like, well, maybe, maybe they don't, they don't, they don't like the uh, salt block. Well, about the time that I got that salt block, I also had an awesome viewer of the channel send us this right here, which is basically the same thing, except it's ground up and it's fine. See right here. Well, I didn't, I wasn't going to use this until they got through the salt block. I was, you know, thinking that, you know, if they finished salt block, then I would start using it since I got the salt block first. So I had a cattle farmer reach out to me and say that, that, um, for me to start using loose minerals versus the, the solid block. And I was like, I got some loose minerals that, that a, uh, viewer sent me. And so I'm swapping. I'm going to try it. Well, I'm not swapping. I'm going to leave the salt block out there, but. I'm starting to put this garlic infused because it, you gotta smell it. Can y'all smell it? it? Smells just like garlic. This garlic salt mineral on their feed. And I guess this ensures that they'll get some of this in their system. And supposedly the garlic helps with the flies because the flies don't like the garlic. So we're gonna try this and hopefully this works way better than the block did. Fingers crossed. And you know who you are that sent us this uh, Redmond Loose Minerals and thank you so much for it. And I'm sure it's gonna take a little bit for it to get, to, you know, to start working and get in the system. I don't expect to see an immediate result. But I will say Moody doesn't have any flies on him this morning. Ain't that right, buddy? he does it's very minimal all right big daddy come on let's go come on moo man come on moo man come on buddy What's that? I think he's been in the hair jail this morning. Look at him. He does like look he's been in the hair jail. Look at this back area right there. Nug. He's trying to look good for Joe. Is that what it is? Nugget. Look at that. His little doopty doop this morning is standing. Look at it standing tall. Look at your doopty doop. Yep. Alfalfa would be proud of your doopty doop, buddy. Yeah, it would. May we get Nugget to help us in the garden today? Nugget, can you help? No. No, okay. All right. He said no. He's going to stick around here then. He's got to guard his geese. I see that. Nugget, I got Joe's, I mean Joe's, well Joe's water going. I need to go cut off. I hear it overflowing. He's on the tractor. That can only mean one thing. We're fixing to do some serious work. I can't hear you. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm saying nice things. We're going to plant a fall garden out here in where the flower farm was. Uh, the flowers are pretty much spent. Um, they are, and there's some pretty ones here and there, but for the most part, they're, um, they're kind of done. They're gonna be done. They are done for the year. I'll show you the cosmos over here. You can see this cosmos is, is, is done. Sunflowers are toast, everything's overgrown. When I got sick for those two months, basically, it kind of threw a monkey wrench and everything out here. So we're, um, we're fixing to start out here, trying to get this garden prepared for the fall. We're gonna try, we're gonna see how it goes. So what do you want to do first? You want to do the sunflowers over there first or the flowers? Uh, here? that'll be easy. Okay. The sunflowers, we're just going to chop them and drop them. Uh -huh. What I need to know is, is that if you smell any snakes, you smell anything right now? I don't. You I don't just put anything? some sunscreen on, so that may be affecting oh, my smell. Oh, I bet that's going to throw it off. Okay. Yeah, that's going to throw it off. I think we're going to start on this side. Okay. We're going to get all this stuff up, roll the mats up, set them off to the side. Uh-huh till it and then I'm gonna go find my tarps and I'm gonna tarp it okay and we had a, a, a viewer send me a big tarp as well that's right and um, I'm gonna see how far the tarps go and tarp it because our seeds won't be ready for four to six weeks and that should be right when we start and then we planting. won't put our mats back down until it's yep. tarped and exactly that's what that yeah I thought about that but I figured that you didn't put it in but with hands no I used the driver oh did you yeah no choice because it's so deep i mean it's so hard i know i ain't gonna be able to pull it yeah i gotta get the puller well i thought i could get a get by by pulling the post up by hand but that's not gonna work i gotta go get the the fence post puller all right got the puller work smarter not harder right <laughs> i thought i could pull them up and i probably could but i'm gonna throw out something doing it that way we're gonna use this thing and save our back, our muscles, and whatever else we may throw out. All right, so being tested today, being tested, went to go use the puller, and look, it came apart. And what happened is, it must have had a bolt in it right here, and it broke, so. This boat's not long enough. Let's see if I can find another one. Now I could use the chain, so I could go look for a chain and pull them up with a tractor. We could do it that way too. Um, hope I can find a boat that'll get me by. All right, looking through my bin bucket, this is the only thing I find that was long enough. And it's got a wing nut on it. Gotta keep it from coming off. So is this, is this perfect? No, but neither are us, right? <laughs> so this is gonna work. This is gonna get me by and get those posts pulled up. Let's try this again. Brother Jason's being tested today. I got two pair of pants that I absolutely love. And they're old and they don't make them anymore. And they're made by Patagonia. Um, yeah. Putting that fence post over there. And look at there. Ripped the darn hole right slap through them. That's all right though. Because I got patches. <laughs> I've been, and this won't be the first time that I've patched these babies. So, one reason that we're bush hogging the flowers down is number one for safety. We want to make sure that there ain't no creature in there that <laughs> that could possibly hurt us. And uh, so we're thinking this would tell them, hey, let's skedaddle. Uh, other thing is, is that it's going to be easier for us to now 
pull up the weed mat and then soak our hoses and drip irrigation and all that kind of good stuff. All right, I'm gonna sound like a broken record here, but definitely being tested today. I wanted to plant the fall garden in where um, we had the flower farm at and reuse that weed mat that we had burned the holes out in for the flowers. But what has happened is, is that the ground is so hard, even though we had a week and a half of rain last week, the ground's just done soaked it all in because of the lack of rain all summer so therefore the ground is really really hard and those staples those landscapes landscape staples we have in the ground holding that weed mat down is not coming up so i'm going to regroup we're going to plant the farm in a different location or the garden in a different location we're not going to plant it here we're going to plant it where we had the sunflowers planted that's my hope so we're going to till that area up we're going to tarp that area and because y'all and my other farm, I had it almost weed free. I had a, a, a stale weed bed because of tilling and tarping. That's just a process I like to use. And taking my hoss willy plow and running it through the garden once or twice a week to keep the weeds at bay, I didn't have to worry about weeds hardly at all. Here on the other hand, this is gonna be a different story. This is gonna be a totally new animal. This is gonna be like me starting from scratch in my other garden, the original cod kill, and battling weeds all the time so it's gonna take some years to get it weed free like i had it over there but hey i love doing it and i ain't scared of no weeds just snakes and rats that's what i'm scared of So we got it nice and tilled. This dirt really does look good. It does look great. It just um, it just needs some organic matter so it won't get so compacted when we're not using it. We want it to stay good and fluffy at all times. Now the tarpon's gonna help because what happens is the rain's gonna hit the top of it and that kind of makes it settle in and then from getting wet to dry, wet to dry, it will start making it get compacted and hard. So the tarp will help with that because the tarp will keep it moist underneath it it'll act like mulch but this is the kicker this is why i love tarpon is because it's going to kill any weeds that's going to come underneath it and if you continue to tarp all the time then you'll create a nice garden area that will have minimum weeds um i don't know how long that'll take uh just depends on how much weed pressure you have at your place or at your garden and the same for us. I don't know how many times. Well, I'll tarp all the time. I tarp in between seasons. So we'll just continue to tarp and tarp and tarp. And each time your weed pressure just gets less and less and less and less. So we're going to go all the way to this front edge. A little tip as you can see the wind the wind is gonna be brutal on these things if you're getting one so what I found what holds them the best are t-posts and I got plenty of t-posts it's called this the length the t-post is so long that it does a great job at holding the tarps down all right so it is the next day we got the area tilled up we got some of it tarped we got some more tarps coming and so today what we're going to do is, is we are fixing to start our fall garden seeds and seed trays and this is why i wanted that greenhouse this is why i wanted a greenhouse so bad uh, my other greenhouse i had would not accommodate this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen so right now I got 14, I had two more left. I may or may not use all these, well, but I went ahead and filled them up with a good seed starting mix. Again, anything I talk about today, seed starting mix, the tarps, the seeds, everything came from Hoss Tools. Link down below, 
So now once I got them filled up now, a lot of times I will moisten the soil in my bucket over here. I didn't do that today. I'm gonna go ahead and moisten my soil now. I like to moisten my soil before I put the seeds in there for various reasons. Uh, it, this stuff, this seed start mix or any pot and soil really, but seed start mix has a lot of peat in it or wood core. I like wood core better because it's more sustainable. And so that stuff just absorbs a large amount of water at first because these things are super super dry and you'll be sitting here you know forever just watering it thinking it's moist check it's not moist so if you got seed in there especially tiny seeds next thing you know it floats up goes over to the next one or flows out or anything like that so i love to pre-moisten mine ahead of time Now what I'm doing is, is I'm looking at the days of maturity. This is the first of September. These are fall garden plants, so they're not gonna like super hot weather. So if it matures in 30 days, I really don't wanna plant it now because I think it's gonna be too hot. But if it's longer than that, I need to go ahead and get that started, and that's what we're doing. And this is what we're starting out with early on. We got some kohlrabi, which is gonna be borderline pushing it but um i'm gonna go ahead and try to get it started uh everything else we should be good on we got swiss chard broccoli cauliflower we got our onions got some leeks rutabagas uh turnip greens and guess what we got right here Flowers. collard greens so i don't see any cornbread no seeds. cornbread seeds yet they mature pretty quick do they yeah okay <laughs> take a high temperature too <laughs> take a high temperature so we got everything labeled the uh, trays are moist we're ready to start planting our seeds and getting these guys started didn't fill up the whole greenhouse is doing what a greenhouse is supposed to do it's warm in here isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is the reason we got it too. <laughs> That's right. For what we're doing today. You got a little. What I got dirt on me. You trying to grow seeds off this beard or what? what? And my darn guard broke, so I got another one ordered. So you gonna be a woolly man? And it's going. We're gonna shave it back down. Good. In the next week. Good. <laughs> All right, so we're we're done i mean our seeds are done well i say that i'm gonna come you back you gotta cover them up i'm gonna cover them up with perlite and that's the question i get asked a lot is perlite what do i what is that white stuff you cover your seeds up with when you're finished and it's perlite but listen guys you don't have to use this it's just what i do it kind of helps with dampening off which is a disease your seeds can get i've never had that issue before and um i just like to use perlite uh it's real dusty so you may want to wear a mask if you use it um but anything will work peat moss your pot and soil you just use your seed start mix or whatever just lightly cover your seeds up you know uh you don't have to go out and go buy some special perlite anything like that uh what are you most excited about growing? well you know i don't know if you can read that or not your collard greens but it says collards so your top bunch of collard greens we love collard greens here in the south it's such a staple uh, it's kind of hard to tell you what it tastes like. Uh, we cook ours in stock. Uh, we also got all-top all turnip greens, which are going to be very similar to the collard greens. Now, a lot of people eat turnip greens. They'll eat the root. Uh, but these are greens only. The root will be really small on these. And the uh, one question I get a lot of is the onions. Because we're starting onions from seed. We're not buying... Uh, the the little onion shoots that you buy from your hardware store or wherever you get your onions from We're starting onions from seed. I did that for the first time Last year in my fall garden last year at my other farm very first time. It seems very year intimidating last. It Was the year before last? Yeah, because last year we were moving. That's right. Fall. That's right. Sorry about that. Yeah year before last Time flies when you have it a does day. and I was a little worried about it. I've never grown onions It seems extremely intimidating but y'all, my onions, they were like the size of my two fists put together. They were huge. They were delicious. And they were really, really good. And the way we do onions here in the south is, is we're going to overwinter our onions. And uh, so we'll plant our onions in the fall, late fall. And then we won't harvest them until the spring. So 
overwinter our onions because we have such a mild winter here in Alabama. Now, I've mentioned this before and I want you guys to know this. There's three different types of onion depending on where you live. And you need to Google this to figure out what zone you're in. But you got a short day onion, you got a long day onion, and you got a midday onion. And so we're short days here in the south. So we have to grow a short day onion because our daylight hours are a lot shorter during the winter and fall months. So Google where you live and be sure you buy the correct onion for your area. I was going to say this is something that I planted and the whole time that I was planting it I was kind of smiling because I like broccoli salad. Yes. And all it is is just broccoli. That's cauliflower. I know this. Oh I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, all it is is just broccoli <laughs> that's cut up and you use the head off of it. Right. And some cheese and some mayonnaise and some people add bacon to it but i was thinking how pretty this would be even though it's cauliflower yeah. it's colorful mm -hmm. i could use this in place of broccoli or combine yep. it with some broccoli yep. and have green yellow well this is white, white. <laughs> green over here white <laughs> yellow and purple yep. wouldn't that be a beautiful be so salad and i don't think people know that you know you think of cauliflower you think of the white variety but there is yellow and purple uh, cauliflower, which is uh, not common in your local grocery store. It's not, and we like funky stuff. So. Yep. And and from my experience, there's no difference. They're just as easy to grow as the white ones. Uh, you talked about broccoli. We're growing two types of broccoli: uh, Godzilla and Green Magic. I've always only grown Green Magic broccoli. I've done it's done really really well here. It can semi tolerate some heat. I never grown Godzilla broccoli, but I love the name, and supposedly they get like huge. So I just thought it'd be cool to grow some of those. Oh, uh, we're also growing rutabagas. We love rutabagas. Uh, we and didn't the, know we did. Though, we didn't know we time. did, and then we tried it. My my dear friend Chef Scott Peacock has a whipped rutabaga recipe, and I'll have to try to find it. And when we do rutabagas this year, we'll post it on our website. Right now, it's not if, on there. If my cabinets are in by then. If your cabinets are in by then. Now, lastly, well, I'll say lastly, we're growing some leeks, but that'll be along with the onions. We're going to use the leek. It's a small leek, so I'm going to kind of use it like a green onion. Lastly is kohlrabi. Now, we introduced this weird-looking, alien-looking vegetable to you guys several years back. To ourselves, too. And to ourselves, too. But um, it's a root crop that grows above the ground. It's weird-looking. You can eat the greens, too. And... But kohlrabi has a very, very taste similar to cabbage. I don't like growing cabbage because it's just been my experience. Cabbage just takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of nu nutrients and fertilizer to get it coming. And then you all of a sudden you get 50 heads of cabbage that are ready. Unless you like a ton of sauerkraut, sauerkraut there's really not much you can do with all that cabbage. Also, kohlrabi is very disease resistant, and cabbage seems to, you know, has a lot of pests. I think um, about worms pegas. when I think cabbage, about cabbage. Yeah, you think of the cabbage moth, which I is, guess it's because I see them all the time, yeah. and every time I see one, it just, you know, <laughs> it's in my mind that, oh, right. there goes our cabbage. When we've grown kohlrabi, I've had zero pests, zero. And plus, the vitamin content in kohlrabi, yep. we when we first started growing it we actually wanted to read about it because we didn't know you know if it was good for you if it was a filler or, mm -hmm. or what the what the content of it was but it is loaded with essential vitamins I mean, and and the thing about kohlrabi is is you could grow a crop and then when you pull harvest that crop you can start you another one but this is us right now i do have some lettuces that i'll start later lettuces are really fast to germinate and get going and i'll get into that when we start our lettuces if i start lettuce now i got a feeling they're just going to bolt because it's so hot other thing that we'll start later in the season uh, i talked about the lettuce uh, we'll do carrots later in the season and we'll do our garlic and i've already had to order my garlic because sometimes garlic is hard to get and a garlic that we can grow here in the south is called elephant garlic which technically is not a garlic it's a leek but it looks like garlic smells like garlic tastes like garlic so it's a it's a it's a way for us to uh have garlic here in the south oh this is done made me hungry room and her kids here y'all better watch out now because she she obviously ain't a good shot she'll then she's done throwing that stuff over you 
she's a good shot in finding bugs, though, because I see them steadily picking them out. Look at them. Steadily picking the bugs out. Yeah, they are picking them bugs out. She's a good mama. She is a good mama. And she's an old lady. Old Roomba. Roomba's an old lady. Go, girl. Yeah. Fifi said, give her a shot. Hey, Fifi. Gonna kiss everybody this morning? Okay. 